7th grade open up resources illustrative mathematics unit 5 lesson 15 solving equations with rational numbers problem number one solve a two-fifths t equals six to make two-fifths x into one x we can multiply both sides by the reciprocal of two-fifths which is five over two on the left side of the equation, the value for t is 1. And on the right side of the equation, 3 times 5 equals 15 over 1 times 1. So 15 over 1 equals 15. So the value for t equals 15. b. Negative 4.5 equals a minus 8. To make the value of a 1a, we need to add 8 to both sides. Now the value on the right side is 1a or a, and on the left side we have negative 4.5 plus 8. That's the same as 8 minus 4.5, which equals 3.5. The value for a is 3.5. c. 1 half plus p equals negative 3. Let's go to the left side of the equal sign. We want to get the p by itself, so we have to subtract one-half from both sides. The left side, the value of p is 1p or p, and on the right side we have negative 3 minus one-half. That's a total of negative three and a half. The value for p is negative three and a half. d. 12 equals x times 3. To get the x by itself, we need to divide both sides by 3. The right side equals 1x, or x, and the left side of the equal sign is 12 divided by 3, which is 4. So in this case, the value of x is 4. e. Negative 12 equals negative 3y. To get the y by itself, we need to divide both sides by negative 3. Now the right side is equal to 1y or y, and the left side is negative 12 divided by negative 3. A negative divided by a negative is a positive, and 12 divided by 3 is 4. So in this case, the value for y is positive 4. Problem number 2 from 7th grade, Unit 5, Lesson 13. Evaluate each expression if x is 2 fifths y is negative 4, and z is negative 2 tenths or negative 0 0.2. a, x plus y. Let's substitute these values. The value for x is 2 fifths, and the value for y is negative 4. So this equals 2 fifths plus negative 4. Now plus a negative 4 is the same thing as minus 4. So 2 fifths minus 4. So minus 4 is the same as minus 4 over 1 as a fraction. We need common denominators, so let's multiply the 1 times 5 to make it a 5. When we do that, we also have to multiply the top number by 5. 4 times 5 equals 20. Now the equation reads 2 fifths minus 20 fifths. The answer is going to be in fifths, and 2 minus 20 is negative 18. So 2 fifths minus 20 fifths equals negative 18 fifths. In this case, a, x plus y equals negative 18 fifths. We can also write this as a mixed number, and that would be negative 3 and 3 fifths. b, 2x minus z. Again, let's substitute the x with the 2 fifths. Now this means 2 times 2 fifths. And let's substitute the z with negative 0.2. Now this means minus negative 0.2, which is the same as the opposite of negative 0.2, which is a positive 0.2. Since 2 times 2 fifths equals 4 fifths, we can rewrite this expression as 4 fifths plus 2 tenths. In order to add fifths to tenths, we need to find a common denominator. Let's turn the fifths into tenths by multiplying it by 2, and we need to multiply the numerator by 2. 
5 times 2 is 10, and 4 times 2 is 8, turning 4 fifths into 8 tenths. Now we have 8 tenths plus 2 tenths. We can write them both as decimals, or we can write them both as fractions and add them. Let's use decimals. You'll notice that I wrote 80 hundredths plus 20 hundredths. That has the same value as 8 tenths plus 2 tenths. Kind of like how 8 dimes has the same value as 80 pennies, and 2 dimes has the same value as 20 pennies. 8 tenths plus 2 tenths equals 10 tenths or 1 whole. So in this case, 2x minus z equals 1. C, x plus y plus z. Substitute the x with the 2 fifths, substitute the y with a negative 4, and substitute z with negative 2 tenths. Since the fraction 2 fifths is equivalent to 4 tenths, we can rewrite this as 4 tenths plus a negative 4 and plus a negative 2 tenths, which equals negative 3.8. So x plus y plus z equals negative 3 and 8 tenths. D, y times x. Let's substitute the y with a negative 4 and substitute the x with 2 fifths. This is a negative times a positive, so we know the answer is going to be a negative. Think of this as a negative 4 over 1. So we have this 4 times 2, that's an 8, and a 1 times 5, that's a 5. Remember, the answer is going to be a negative. y times x equals negative 8 fifths. Problem number 3. Match each equation to a step that will help solve the equation. So for these, we don't actually have to solve the equation. We just have to find the step that would help us solve the equation. A, for this first equation, we can get the x by itself by dividing both sides by 5, or multiplying each side by 1 fifth. And 1 fifth of 5x is 1x, or x. B, x over 5 equals 8. That's the same as x divided by 5 equals 8. So we have to undo that division. So we would need to multiply both sides by 5. Because we want to get the x by itself. And x divided by 5 times 5 gets back to 1x or x. C. 3 equals negative x over 5 or negative x divided by 5. We need to multiply both sides by 5, but not just by 5, but by negative 5, because a negative times a negative equals a positive, and we'd like that x to become a positive. So we have to multiply both sides by negative 5. Doing that would make the x a positive 1x or a positive x. D. 7 equals negative 5x. In this case, x is being multiplied by negative 5. To undo that operation, we'd have to divide by a negative 5. And dividing by a negative 5 is the same as multiplying by a negative 1 fifth. So we have to multiply both sides by a negative 1 fifth to get the x by itself and make it a positive 1x or positive x. Problem number 4. A. Write an equation where a number is added to a variable and a solution is negative 8. Let's start with a variable and add a number to it. Here we have x plus 5, and the solution needs to be negative 8. That means that the value for x is negative 8. So if the value for x was negative 8, then negative 8 plus 5 would be negative 3. So the equation where a number is added to a variable and the solution is negative 8 could be x plus 5 equals negative 3. Let's test it out just for the heck of it. To get the x by itself, we have to subtract 5 from both sides. Now we have the x by itself, and it reads x equals negative 3 and negative 5. That's a total of 8 negatives, so x equals negative 8. Remember to write this equation as your answer. x plus 5 equals negative 3. B. Write an equation where a number is multiplied by a variable and a solution is negative 4 fifths. This time they want to multiply a number by a variable. And the solution needs to be negative 4 over 5. 
So we can use 5 fourths x equals negative 1. That's because when we multiply 5 fourths times its negative reciprocal, the answer is going to be negative 1. So you could write this equation as your answer. 5 fourths x equals negative 1. Problem number 5 from 7th grade unit 5 lesson 8. The markings on the number line are evenly spaced. Label the other markings on the number line. Let's use the existing markings to help us out. Start at zero, and it looks like we have to move two dashes to the left to get to negative one. That means that every two dashes is a whole number. When you start from zero, two dashes to the right of zero would be positive one, two dashes to the left of zero would be negative one, and four dashes to the left of zero would be negative two. The dashes between the whole numbers are evenly spaced, so those dashes would represent half units. For example, one dash to the right of zero would be 0 0.5, and one dash to the left of zero would be negative 0 0.5. Problem number six from seventh grade unit five, lesson 12. In 2012, James Cameron descended to the bottom of Challenger Deep in the Marianas Trench, the deepest point in the ocean. The vessel he rode in was called Deep Sea Challenger. Challenger Deep is 35,814 feet deep at its lowest point. A. Deep Sea Challenger's descent was a change in depth of negative 4 feet per second. We can use the equation y equals negative 4x to model this relationship, where y is the depth and x is the time in seconds that have passed. How many seconds does this model suggest it would take for Deep Sea Challenger to reach the bottom? Let's use the information they gave us. Negative 35,814 divided by negative 4. Negative 4 represents descending feet per second, and negative 35,814 represents the total number of feet they need to descend. The model suggests that 8,953.5 seconds will pass while Deep Sea Challenger reaches the bottom. B. To end the mission, Deep Sea Challenger made a one-hour ascent to the surface. How many seconds is this? The ascent was one hour. That means that it was going back up to the surface and it took one hour. Well, we know that there's 60 minutes in one hour and 60 seconds in each minute. Since the ascent took an hour, we can multiply 60 seconds times 60 minutes. And that tells us that there were 3,600 seconds in the ascent. C. The ascent can be modeled by a different proportional relationship, y equals k times x. What is the value of k in this case? y equals k times x. k is the constant, the distance that it traveled up during the ascent, divided by the number of seconds that it took to make the ascent, which was 3,600 seconds. You can see here I wrote y equals k times x, but I substituted the k with 35,814 over 3,600. Be sure to support my YouTube channel by liking this video, leaving a comment, and subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.